check it out welcome back today i'm going over how we can generate some music using logic in dreams now this is not going to generate a symphony for for you uh, it's not really even going to make anything that impressive but it can generate music that is um you know what somewhat somewhat like just okay um it's decent for uh it's a, actually a really great application for um if you had like a bunch of different sound effects that you kind of wanted to randomly have, or if you're just looking to kind of, um, you know, add random notes here and there, um, it's a, a great way of doing things as well. So I'm going to go through this with you. Uh, I'm going to go through the logic. And of course, um, there are so many different ways you can do this. So uh, maybe you'll get inspired and come up with your own uh, ideas and solutions. Okay, so... Let's go over the logic and then we can plug any instrument we want and it'll work. So the idea here is that we have a number of notes that we want to play, right? Or that, that we want our, um, our logic to be able to choose from, right? So let's say we had 20 different notes and um, we had some logic set up so that when it wants to play a note, it picks one of those 20 notes. The idea here is that we have a timeline, and inside the timeline, we'll have an instrument with notes, you know, recorded into it. And uh, we can use the value that our logic wants to use for a note and move the playhead position accordingly. So let's say we had 10 notes to choose from. We could take these. Um, the active port from the selector and if we divide by 10 then this gives us a value between 0 and 1 and so every time it goes to the next port it would increase by 0.1 we can see this here if I um, here if I have this timer here that's repeating and every second it goes to the next port we can see the timeline or the playhead position in the timeline jumps Right? And so if we had different notes at these different spots, it would, uh, it would be able to play those notes in those spots. Okay? So that's the basic idea. So, um, and this can scale too. It's totally scalable. So if we had um, this stuff in here, let me bring um, these in like this, and I'll get a node. This node will go into the active port, right? Now we have a completely scalable little module here, and we can have a bunch of these. So I mean, you can have you can have a ton of them. Um, with what I'm about to show you, we could have up to ten of these. So we'd have up to 100 notes. But for now, let's just stick with two. So we use another selector, and this selector will choose which one of these are powered. So here we have 20 different ports that we can power based on some logic. So let's go over that. Let's go over the logic part here for how we can choose that. Let's say we have, since there are 20 notes, let's say we have a number, a random number being chosen between uh, 1 and 19. And uh, there's a bunch of ways to do this. I'm going to have it constantly generate a random number. And I'll get a variable out. We can name this note. And we can get a variable modifier out. And this will set the value of note when it's powered. And so it'll come from this signal, which we could round. Since we're picking a value from uh, 0 to 19, um, we can just set it to round because uh, we don't have to worry about it going to like 20 or anything like that. And we'll plug that in there. And so for now, let's just use a, another simple little timer here, and we'll say every 0.6 seconds, this will get a new value. And so now we can see every 0.6 seconds, there's a different note being chosen. So how do we determine uh, which of these power which of these get power, right? So if it's between 0 and 9, we want this one to be powered. And if it's, if it's between 10 and 19, it'll be this one. So we can take this number and divide it by 10. 
and this will either give us a 0 or a 1. So we can see that we're either getting a 0 or a 1 in the 1's place here. So if we take this number and plug it into the active port, we can see it'll choose which port to go to. And now if we take this number and get the remainder after dividing by 10, we'll have the individual note for which or the individual value for the ports on the inside, right? So for example, say 13, say we get 13. Well, 13 divided by 10 would give us one with a remainder. So this would get set to port B, which would power this one on. Then we get the remainder. So 13 divided by 10 gives us one with a remainder of three. And so a three would come out and go into here and it would power this port here, port D right, because it's zero index, zero, one, two, three. So it would power this one. So three would go here, it would get divided by 10 again, it would give us 0.3, and this would move to that value in the timeline. Right, so there we have it. That's, that's all the logic really there for how to choose the note. So now that we have that, why don't we fill this with some instrument data. I'm going to bring this down here and I'll get an instrument out. I'll use this plucked cardboard base. We have this timeline. And I'm going to bring this down here. I'll bring it down to one second because uh, it doesn't really matter, but this way it's easy to look at. So we have this here, right? And so we just want to fit 10 notes in here, right? We just want to fit 10 notes inside of this. So if we had um, a note on each quarter note here, for example, so here we have this here. So this is exactly 10 notes inside of this. And uh, if we pull this out of here we can see this just it's just a bunch of notes from that scale so here we'll drag this so that it's exactly even and so now we can see that it'll pick notes so if we take the same timeline and put it in both we'll see that it'll randomly pick notes play right so that's cool um, obviously uh, you know these are all the same notes so you may want to change this um, we can bring this whole thing down if we wanted So now we have it spanning across two octaves. So that's cool. Um, obviously, we don't want to play a note every second, right? That's or whatever this is. It's, it's monotonous. doesn't really sound that good. So let's just add a little bit of logic for, um, you know, uh, having rests. So in order to just add some rests here, because rests are as important, if not more important than the notes themselves, we'll get out this little, get out a counter. We'll do one for the beats where it's allowed to play and one for the rest that we'd like to have happen. So we'll just, we'll set them both to four, right? So uh, the idea here is that um, when it pulses and um, this counter is not full, then we're allowed to play a note. And so we'll power this variable modifier. When this is full, this will be on, and we'll wait for this thing to fill up before resetting um, this counter, right? So now it'll play some notes, and then it waits. Um, so let's go ahead and place these 
on the music channel. And now we can get out um, a music channel gadget. And here we can, you know, adjust the volume a little bit, maybe add some distortion. Right, kind of gives that like, kind of like cave vibe. You know, if you were exploring a cave and this was going on, I don't think, uh, you wouldn't really think anything of it. You wouldn't think, oh, that's the thing that's procedurally generated music. It just kind of adds to the vibe, you know? So that's why I said this is a, a great technique for sound effects, but obviously for, you know, kind of ambiance type music too. You can go so many different directions with this. Um, I just wanted to show you off one technique that I came up with a couple days ago, which I thought gave kind of a nice result. I hope everyone's safe and doing well. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, real quick uh, update here. I added a bunch of stuff in here, like sliders, so you can choose the number of note choices, uh, you can change the tempo, the number of notes per phrase, the rest, all that stuff, and I've created a copy of this with a uh, readme. Um, so if anyone wants to use this, I'll leave the link to the uh, actual creation, the indreams.me link, in the description of the video. So if you want to use this in your game, feel free. Or if you want to play around with it, go ahead. All right. Vince Coley out. Vince Coley.